Okay guys, it's Jandal here. We're ready to finish building our Easy Capillary Hoop Stove, ECHS. Alright, let's get cracking, shall we? Now, if you remember, in the first video, I told you that you can use one of these for making ribs. And basically what you do is you hold, hold the inner up to the light and you line up the um, the line with the edge of the fish slice and you press it very hard onto it. You need to feel the shoulder there collapse. It's much easier with my thumb. So I like to hold the uh, hold it like this and press this way. But I found that if I'm going to use the fish slice I really need to have this end up against something solid. So I, sometimes I stand in the kitchen, I have this wedged up against uh, the side of the bench. I press this in. As I mentioned, I actually prefer not to use that, but you can do it. I'm going to use the uh, tent stake and show you how I do it with the tent stake. I just find it a lot easier. Now, again, once again, I'm going to line up the stake carefully with the, with the uh, line on the inner there. And you do have to be a little bit careful about this in terms of getting it lined up perfectly, otherwise you're going to get grooves all over the place. And it's right on there and I'm going to press it with both of my thumbs. You may or may not have heard it, the shoulder just collapsed then. And I'm going to give it a little rub. I've got my thumbs behind, behind there, really pressing it in. Now, You'll see here that the shoulder has collapsed, and that's important because we need the alcohol to come up into the groove there. This is like the combustion chamber around here, well actually the pressure chamber. We need the alcohol to be able to get through that shoulder. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest, just very carefully. See if you can hear the shoulder pop this time. Probably did hear that. Okay guys, we've finished that. Doesn't look too bad. You might see on the inside there that there's some red material. That is um, actually stuff called JB Weld. I'm experimenting with blocking off the groove inside there because I suspect that a bit of gas uh, leaks through there. So let's take a look at the drill. Now as I mentioned earlier I'm going to use a 0.6mm drill. I find it with these pin vices that um, it's quite important how you tighten them. They have to be very tight. Now you're also going to need um, just to make sure that the drill bit is straight. If it's off to one side, it's going to wander around and it'll snap. These things break easily, you need to be careful. And we're going to go initially in, just make a little small depression, just to seat the drill. Don't actually go through, but just far enough in to seat it. And then we're going to turn it at a 45 degree angle that way, and a 45 degree angle that way. The idea is to get a jet that will shoot out and up and make a vortex. Now here is a little piece of paper that I've prepared just to help me with my 45 degree angle that way. Basically what I do is I place the intended hole on, on the corner there and then when I'm drilling I aim for this corner here and that gives me 45 degrees. Basically this is just the outline of the can with a cross at 45 degree angle. Alright, so let's get started. One thing I do is it's hard to get this angle correct. So I just try to be cons consistent and I rest my hand on my small knuckle so that even though I'm not necessarily at 45 degrees, at least I'm at a consistent angle. 
All right, let's see if we can get started here. First I'm going straight in just to get the drill bit seated. Give it a few turns. I'm up on my knuckle and I'm going to turn slowly this way and aim at that corner. Here we go. Now guys, it's really important to turn um, the drill bit carefully. If you put too much pressure on one side you'll snap your drill bit and that really sucks because usually you've only got the one drill bit at that size you can't replace it quickly. Okay, I'm through. Let's take a look. 45 degrees by 45 degrees. I'm just going to withdraw the um, drill bit very carefully because I don't want to accidentally widen that hole any more than it should be. What do we do next? Well the last part of the pre preparation stage is to do these tabs. Now there are different ways of doing the tabs. Some people like to drill a hole inside the ridge right on the line where the tab should go up to, six millimeters up, and then they cut up to that drill hole. Some other people use a file or a hacksaw blade and they slowly cut their way down to the line. The advantage of that is that it leaves a gap between the tabs and it looks very tidy when you've finished. I don't do either of those methods because I find it much easier and perhaps even better to use a pair of scissors and I'll show you why. What we're going to do is we're going to cut inside the groove, not here but in the groove and we're going to cut up to that 6mm line and work our way around and this has a particular interesting feature which I'll show you very soon when we finish. Okay, so we're finished. <clears throat> it only took me 30 seconds to cut my way around with those scissors. Now if you look this way you'll see that the tabs are overlapping. That's something that happens with scissors and that's a good thing because I'm going to put bend these tabs inwards and because they're overlapping they're not going to catch on each other. Let's see if we can do that. Now you can just bend these tabs in with your fingers. I prefer to use a pair of pliers just because it looks a little bit neater. If you don't have a pair of pliers, then by all means just use your fingers. Okay guys, we're finished. And as you can see, those tabs overlap each other quite nicely. We should now be able to insert this into the base, and this is the getting towards the final step of the assembly process. Now, the first thing you need to do is make sure that there's no little tears or burrs or anything here. And the reason for that is that when we slide this in, if there's a small tear, you can it'll split and you'll end up breaking the outer. So just be careful about that. Some people here will use a shim, just a small piece of aluminium, and they'll slide it in just to help them ease the inner into the outer. I find that usually I don't have to do that. Okay guys, I actually am having a bit of trouble getting that in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to heat or anneal the um, outside of the can here. This is going to soften the metal and it's also going to expand it a little bit and that should help with insertion. Let's see how we get on now. Oh, 
Okay, I've got it in quite well, but not fully in. And we need to get this to push right in so that these tabs are actually against the bottom of the outer. Because we need these tabs to help us suck up the alcohol. And if they don't meet the bottom, you'll end up with a little dribble, two or three mils left at the end of every burn. So we're going to have to push this all the way in. Let's start with our thumbs. See how far in we can get. Okay, that's quite a long way in. Sometimes you can get it the whole way in with your thumbs. There's another little trick. I've got the lid of another can here. And I'm going to use that to help me push this all the way down. Let's put a bit of pressure on it. Be careful not to split the outer wall. Let's see how that worked out. Okay, that looks pretty good. It looks as though the tabs have gone right to the bottom. So I'm going to cut around this way until the outer is just above the inner. In fact, I'm finding it easier to go this way on this occasion. Starting to look quite good, but we need to finish it because uh, we've got a little ridge. The outer is taller than the inner. I've got various options for getting rid of that ridge. One option, um, which may actually be the best method in terms of efficiency, is to heat up the outer and just very slowly work your way around, heating it and pressing it. Roll it over the inner just a little bit, and that will help to seal the gap between the outer and the inner. Some people prefer to do that. It doesn't look very good. I actually find that I don't need to seal that gap around there. Um, if I've used the correct can, there's normally no gap and no leak. So I normally just uh, sand this down. Get some sandpaper, turn it like that, and sand it down. On this occasion, I'm going to start with a file. I'm going to start with a file, it's just going to make things a little bit quicker. Okay guys, we're finished. I have to say I'm pretty happy with this one. This is 9 jets, 0.65 millimeters each, 40 millimeters high, 42 millimeter hole in the middle, and all that's left now is to have a cup of tea. So I'm going to try this guy out. Thanks for sticking with me guys. I hope you enjoyed this series of videos. I might do some future videos looking at maximizing efficiency and things like that, just to help you get the best out of your stove. But for now, I'm going to tune out. Thank you very much.